Attention, all curious minds, innovators, and trendsetters. It's time to pause, lean in, and get ready for an extraordinary journey as we dive deep into the fascinating realms of life, technology, entertainment, and business. Let's explore, learn, and grow together. Brace yourselves for the next thrilling episodes of Hit Their Talks is about to take off. Counting down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. One, and here we go. Hi everyone, Zoltan here. We're back again this week. And this time we're talking about blockchain again. And especially how can every blockchain company go greener? That's the main question of the day today. So I have with me uh, Mohamed Hassan uh, Imo, uh, co-founder and CTO at Mental Protocol and Maurizio Zoliker, uh, ecosystem growth lead at Peak. So guys, uh, just like to ask you to introduce yourself before we dive into the questions. All right, so let's start with Mo. Um, thank you very, very much. Um, not my favorite part to talk about myself, but I'll do it. Um, Co-founder and CTO of two sustainability startups in the blockchain space, uh, one of which we got uh, into the Consensus Tachyon Accelerator. That's actually where our journey kind of started. Um, we got funded by Consensus, Draper University, VC, and back in 2018. Um, since then, we've been in a couple of different accelerators. We got a couple of government grants like Blockchain Accelerator, uh, um, UC Berkeley's Blockchain Accelerator uh, Accelerator Program. Um, we also got into the Google Climate Accelerator just a few months ago. We were really, really happy about And now I'm also a Google founder buddy. And just today, I was mentoring the Google AI um, Accelerator cohort um, during a session just like an hour ago. I'm also on the um, I'm on a Energy Web, um, which is a blockchain for transitioning or decarbonizing the energy grid. It's composed of like 50, 40 big energy companies like uh, Aon, Shell, and so um, and uh, Tesla was on it before. And um, currently, I'm on the grants uh, committee, and we have a fund size around something between eighty to one hundred million dollars. And I'm one of five and I'm one of two grants program managers. I'm, Honestly, please, people apply. Uh, if you have a startup in the sustainability space, energy space, or uh, core blockchain infrastructure space, please reach out to the Energy Web um, uh, Grants um, Program, and uh, we would love to take in your application. All right, thank you. Mauricio. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for, for having us on. Um, really excited to be here. Ecosystem Growth Lead at Peak, uh, basically oversee uh, the growth of the ecosystem and business development here at, at Peak Network or EOT Labs. All right, that was short and sweet. So, by the way, for those who are viewing this uh, this podcast, Mo, I love to hear. <laughs> Thank you very much. I got it. Um, honestly, just before the beginning of summer um, for the festival season, I love music. I sing uh, and do karaoke like almost every single day, whether it's at a park or a home. And during festival season, I thought, what could be fun to do with my hair? I already had dreads. And the guy told me, the a hairdresser, that these extensions glow in the dark. Uh, oh, so wow. I basically at night become a full on avatar, uh, you know, glowing hair. I just, you know, uh, whip it around sometimes or when I'm dancing. It's just, I love it. So I suggest okay. everybody here to get. Uh, glow the dark extensions. <laughs> All right, thank you, <laughs> Mauricio. Thank you. So let's start with you then. So first of all, uh, could you tell us and our listeners something about Peak and its vision? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so Peak's mission, in, in in a sentence, is to build a decentralized, open, and democratic machine economy owned by the people and the machines that use it. Um, if I want to dive a little bit deeper into what Peak is, Peak is a specialized layer one blockchain for decentralized physical infrastructure networks, also known as DPINs. Uh, Peak uh, enables entrepreneurs or builders uh, to, to build a de decentralized applications, DApps, for vehicles, robots, 
devices um, while empowering uh, users to govern and earn from these connected machines providing goods and, and services. Um, some example of applications that 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 um, like are these type of deepens or 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 D apps would be a decentralized Uber solution. These are examples being built on Peak today. Um, a peer to peer open electric vehicle charging station network. So an open network when people can rent out their their charging stations, cars can come by and get paid for for the transactions. Or the ground breaking Tesla fleet um, and and car sharing app that essentially allows anyone anywhere to invest in in Teslas and earn from the revenue as they provide uh, rides. Um, yeah, so essentially we're building the economy of things from the ground up, enabling people, not just big tech and corporations, uh, to extract value from, from these machines with minimal risk and waste, and in doing so, democratizing the full potential of machines, vehicles, robots, or devices. All right, so that sounds awesome. And I know that Mo has something to add to this because I just want to ask you, how does a mental protocol calculate the carbon footprint of something like uh, Mauricio just shared? And, and could you tell us more about the methodology and everything it entails? Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Where do I start? Interesting. So um, you guys all remember, especially during the NFT craze that was happening a few years ago, um, blockchains being big, big emitters was very much in topic. Anytime we have blockchain mentioned, even if it was a good kind of like uh, launch or uh, interesting integration with like a real world traditional you know, bank, somehow, somehow be uh, blockchains being um, emitters or being bad for the environment was always brought up especially with NFTs. And um, the interesting thing about it is it depends on the blockchain, right? Um, if, are you, is the consensus algorithm proof of work, proof of stake, proof of authority? How, well, how big is the uh, network size? Um, where are the nodes on the network, right? Are they all in America? Are they in China? Are they in Europe? Where they are, the changes, what type of energy they use? So this is a complicated question with a lot of variables. Um, and the approach we take to calculating emissions honestly depends on the blockchain itself, the network, uh, you know, uh, configuration, the type of consensus algorithm. And to give an example, uh, for proof of work, I mean, generally what we like to do is go from the bottom up, from an energy centric approach. We like to know what are the uh, what are the number of uh, you know, mining nodes on the network, if it's a proof of work or if it's proof of stake or proof of authority, what are the number of, you know, um, blockchain nodes that are, you know, validating um, blocks? We try to find out how many they are, what type of um, resources they have in terms of like memory, RAM, um, uh, CPU, and we break that down according to this open source cloud. Well, if it's on the cloud, we break it down to an open source cloud um, methodology. We leverage that to get the, um, the energy consumption needed for one uh, node. And then we try to multiply that across the whole network. And we try to keep a track of that as time goes on. Some network providers like Polygon provide us with um, the number of nodes as you know um, in real time. Some other uh, projects we follow up. So essentially what we do is we calculate um, you know, from a real world um, uh, kind of like we try to understand how the network is functioning in real time right now. And we then break that down um, using an open source methodology called uh, the open source uh, cloud computational uh, methodology. I think the exact name, let me check on that because I like to be accurate. It's called the cloud carbon footprint um, methodology. So if you guys are interested, we use that when we're working with networks that have a lot of cloud-based nodes. If they're a bit more, let's say, decentralized. Uh, let's say anybody could create their own nodes, like maybe in Ethereum. We use different kind of like measures like Hive OS and so on to understand the loadouts. It's a bit of an uh, involved process, but uh, if you're interested to learn more, please let me know. We also have a causal model. I would be happy to share which kind of like delineates a, at a network specific how we calculate the emissions. Please get in the chat and tell us how we're wrong. All right, that doesn't sound complicated at all. Okay, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. 
All right. Yeah. So Mo, Mo, I will stay with you for the next question because I'm interested if this approach is suitable to any uh, mm -hmm. blockchain or and what are the main challenges with measuring uh, blockchain's carbon footprint? Oh my God, there's so many issues. Oh my God. Okay, so when you think about it from a network perspective, there are so many things that that is needed for the network to function even without the nodes itself. You have the operations of the network, the the people in the company, uh, or the, the network operators, let's say, the devs themselves. You have um, you know tools like uh, Chainlink uh, that networks may be using, or the graph. And it's really difficult to understand the real world impact of this network existing. If this network existed, what are the all the toolings and people uh, that are needed for it to continue functioning kind of getting a measure of that is not easy. For example, there might be layer twos that rely on it. That also, because the layer one exists, the layer two had, um, I mean, whatever, that's, uh, uh, it's a philosophical question you could argue, but the layer one is creating the need for a layer two, which causes that emission to exist. Same thing with um, um, kind of like, um, like you have, you know, if you want to like move funds from one, uh, network to another, you have, again, gateways, right? And these gateways also have nodes and they're a separate system. So really to capture the real emissions from any one network, you have to kind of take a holistic approach and understand what are the individuals, the operations, the systems, the stakeholders, what are they doing that necessitate this network to exist? So from a network specific, we take a network specific approach, we try to interview each network operator and try to understand what is the most important aspects of the network, what can we measure, what can we assume. And I think from um, the most, like the biggest challenge is understanding what approach to take um, and what assumptions are not so problematic. Like that's not easy to understand sometimes. Um, but yeah, I mean, something is better than nothing. Measuring and trying to internalize this external cost we're having on the environment, that is super important and that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, as I told our listeners earlier, that doesn't sound complicated, but don't try this at home because it's, it's actually, it's very tricky. All right, thank you more for your Absolutely. inputs. I will be back to you with more questions, but now I want to ask Mauricio about your recent partnership because I know that you guys have recently joined forces and that uh, Mental Protocol joined the Peak ecosystem. And Mauricio, can you please extend on what this integration means for Peak? And maybe mention like that it will help maybe the depths and deep ends measure their carbon footprint. Uh, by the way, guys, just to you so you remember, it's P E A Q uh, when you when you are uh, looking up a peak. So Maurizio, yeah, for sure. Um, I'll try to explain it in a way that we can all understand, and it's not so technical well, for maybe some of the listeners. So Menthol essentially allows us to automatically track the entire blockchain's on-chain emissions and energy consumption, which in turns in turn allows for any deep in the app or machine on peak to not only like transparently track their, their carbon footprint, but also offset um, the carbon emissions with verified renewable energy and carbon credits, uh, which ultimately enables the entire peak ecosystem is the ecosystem, the peak ecosystem, what we like to call it, to attain a climate positive status. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty, um, pretty easily and without the need to code much yourself, it's all uh, done by Menthol themselves and the entire integration. So it's quite a good tool to have and uh, really helpful for, for the entire ecosystem and, and, and all the green D apps building. All right, so, so as I understand, uh, the mythology and the calculator too uh, that we discussed earlier are just the first milestone. And uh, I'm curious about what's next. Yeah, so so Menthol is uh, basically going to be readily available for anyone building and testing on Crest very soon, uh, which Crest is Peaks Canary Network where it's our testing grounds. Um, anybody building and going to deploy on Peak first uh, test on Crest. Um, and then the next big milestone will be when Menthol Protocol uh, fully deploys on the peak network when we have our mainnet launch in quarter one next year. So it'll be full deployment and um, we'll be able to be leveraged by anyone building. All right. So Mo, again to you. Uh, we've been covering throughout the podcast and throughout the news on our websites that uh, blockchain is not eco-friendly. And... Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah. So where do you stand on that? And and how can Web3 startups be more sustainable? Mm, so, um, yeah, this is definitely um, quite interesting, especially nowadays where efficiency of blockchain networks has been improved. We have proof of stake. Ethereum has done a monumental, uh, you know, transition and they've reduced their emissions down to like 99% um, from before. Bitcoin, unfortunately, is still a little bit, um, um, you know, uh, uh, a bit uh, energy intensive, carbon intensive. However, I think we are starting as developers, network operators, to, to realize um, that it does matter to be energy efficient, not only in terms of cost, but in terms of also the stability impact. And I think blockchains from like five years, 10 years ago, and now we have a, a big difference in terms of the approaches these new networks are taking and some of the um, older networks, the approaches are taking to transition to a more efficient process. So I think, I mean, there is some, um, there is some truth to the um, to the um, observation that blockchains might be a bit um, not not great for the environment at some points. But I we do there are chains that are fully carbon uh, free. They're uh, buying renewable energy credits or carbon credits to offset their emissions. Um, they are making agreements with green mining pools. There are chains like this, and the ones that don't have those agreements or are not as um, let's say, um, you know, are not big enough to kind of like make those specialized deals. We are there to make climate action um, really easy, automated. Um, that's kind of what we do. We calculate, uh, we create a methodology for your network. Um, we um, uh, create automated uh, tools to kind of purchase those uh, carbon credits um, periodically. And we even allow your community to create um, cool pools or crowdfunded um, uh, 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 pools where you can add those contracts or uh, externally owned accounts that you would like to make sustainable. So essentially, instead of just making the network sustainable, you could also start from the bottom up and make any dApp sustainable. You could, and once we're fully launched, you could add Uniswap v3 or v4 contracts. You can just create a kind of like a Kickstarter kind of page, ask people to uh, fund, and maybe you could even give away swag uh, if the community fully funds um, this uh, cool pool. And um, yeah, I think there's some truth to it, but I think at the same time, blockchain, the goal we have here is kind of to improve coordination. We're creating one common layer for a lot of different use cases to coordinate. And this means a lot more efficiency in terms of like business processes. Once we have a fully realized kind of like ecosystem, what this means is we're gonna have a lot more use cases that will help make the real world uh, processes much more efficient. We will also uncover new types of value extraction or value capture we can do. And this, I think, um, um, will have an effect in terms of like reducing the middlemen. For example, a lot of industries have a lot of middlemen, a lot of archaic processes. Blockchain can kind of like revitalize these um, traditional ways of, uh, or this paradigm of working with APIs or walled gardens. We can have more of like a, a common community or garden where we can um, interact with each other. For example, Deepens. Um, the cool thing about Deepens for us is uh, we can literally integrate or work with a lot of different kind of like networks of physical devices. And in our case, we're very interested to make them sustainable. So essentially imagine real world pro, um, devices. It could be um, your electric vehicle. It could be, um, you know, uh, your smart fridge, it could be, um, you know, a sensor you have uh, getting the weather um, in certain areas. We could essentially make sure that all those devices are sustainable while you are still getting value from uh, as an individual or a device operator. So you could still have that kind of like business uh, value kind of like uh, improvements or you could also allow new stakeholders like individuals and small companies to c compete with larger companies in terms of coordinating value or sharing value. And at the same time with just maybe one click uh, or a few more, uh, you could make your whole physical device network sustainable. And that's what we would like to do. All right, so, so most of the listeners and viewers on our podcast are just exactly like me. This is seasons two of the season two of the podcast, and we learn not every episode new things. Now we learned about the decentralized apps, apps a couple of months ago, and 
now what the hell are deep ins? Because this is something <laughs> what that I, I just heard about this week. And so Mauricio, I would like to ask you because uh, you earlier mentioned that mental protocol will help deep ins on people to be more sustainable. So to rephrase that, can you say more things about what deep ins is or deep ins are? Yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, definitely a new term. It got coined by uh, Masari in the beginning of the year, this year. So Peak was already building um, this layer one for the economy of things, but now we've got a term to it, which is really nice. It really brings a community together. And um, these 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 networks can really have, it's sort of like DeFi. It's it's their own niche, it's their own type of application. So it's nice to be have an acknowledged and build a community of deep ends. So deep ends are decentralized physical infrastructure networks. Uh, they use token rewards to incentivize people to connect physical machines or devices and offer services to people peer to peer. Um, for example, uh, include like some examples include electric vehicle charging stations uh, or cooking up your internet hotspot to offer a service and then earn. Um, yeah, so essentially deep ends are community owned networks offering services via community owned machines uh, to to real communities. So it's real world value for everyone um, and, and anyone. All right, so now we learned a new thing today. That's so good. So Mo, uh, deep ins may be a new approach to, to building up physical infrastructures, but uh, would you say that it's more sustainable? Okay, yeah, good question, good question, good question. Um, I'd say this, deep ins um, are more democratic. You know, uh, before it was a lot of the time physical infrastructure was maintained, operated, owned by bigger companies. Um, even if you had these devices, you as an individual had no way to uh, uh, take part in terms of like power markets or take part in flexibility, take part in maybe let's say your data being used for somebody and selling that yourself if you want to. Um, and now what we're having is a more democratized um, uh, mechanism for individuals to allow their devices to take part in the market themselves. Instead of having companies aggregate all your data and devices and then using that for their benefit, you yourself can, you know, uh, take advantage from the stuff you own. So I would say um, from one perspective in terms of socially sustainable, economically sustainable, I would say definitely. This uh, prevents the problem that we're having nowadays where value extraction is happening and then being funneled all the way to the top, to the billionaires, to the big corporations. Every new business kind of like opportunity is always being closed by the big companies, big individuals, people who have the capabilities and money and resources. So these type of things I think is wonderful. In terms of uh, environmentally sustainable, it depends. Let's say more people see a value in getting more of these devices so they can earn revenue. Um, that might increase efficiency and um, business development around the world. But of course, more devices means more energy use, means more emissions, depending on if your you know, grid is not fully uh, transitioned to a sustainable source, renewable sources. So from that angle, I would say that's where um, awareness comes in and also where climate action tools come in. So that's what we would want to do. Blockchains, uh, like we mentioned before, may not be always eco-friendly, but they uh, are, more and more becoming a tool to make the world more eco-friendly. And we believe it's, you know, our first stage is to make blockchain sustainable and then to make the world sustainable using blockchains. And um, I believe deepens are a great uh, um, kind of like target to kind of making the physical infrastructure layer more sustainable because that's essentially where most of the energy and emissions, uh, let's say at least more, most of the energy consumption is coming from. All right. So, so we know that you uh, mentor startups at uh, the Google AI Accelerator in Berlin. So, my next question is: uh, Either way, we are doing such a panel in Warsaw at the European Gaming Congress later in October about the interconnection between blockchain, AI, and even fintech. So, I would like to ask you if you see a potential uh, for interplay between blockchain and AI. Or are these technologies not that related between each other? Um, I am a big fan of, uh, you know, every kind of like tool 
you know, when you're building, when you're creating a building, you use so many tools, right? You use everything from a hammer to a jackhammer to cranes. To, uh, you know, there's so many tools we do use to create something. And I think blockchain and AI are powerful tools in and of themselves, and they can be core tech for whole businesses by themselves. And also, I think there are a lot of use cases where blockchain and AI do does make a lot of sense. For example, let's say you have, um, um, you know, AI assistance, right? You have a lot of these things come up. Imagine somebody's done a lot of prompt engineering, a lot of crafting, uh, and created a really useful AI to uh, help you organize your social life. You know, what are you going to do this week? And it searches maybe all the events in your city. It knows your interests. It recommends stuff to you. It might even help you purchase the tickets and send it to you. Um, but let's say that person who built this AI model um, is not like a fully, it's not a startup. It's there don't really know really what to do, but there's a platform, there could be a platform where you could buy or sell or rent these AI agents. And blockchain is really good for exchanging value, for uh, having centralized access to value. You could even use protocols like Ocean Protocol, which is a data-centric marketplace, where you could upload some model like this and it would work because you could have API integrations, you could um, uh, gate access per use per as a subscription licensing, and you as an individual don't need to build all the infrastructure to allow you to sell an AI model. So I think just like any other really good tool, if you are creative enough, you can find a lot of use cases. All right, Mauricio, what's your take on this? What role will AI play in the economy of things of peak? Yeah, well, AI is already playing a role in the economy of things. Um, there's AI agents uh, available for deployment on Peak through integration with Fetch AI. They have autonomous agents. Um, yeah, and this integration empowers builders to use these micro agents to optimize and automate various business processes. So it ultimately leads to machines providing services more efficiently for people and other machines. Um, but I think this goes further than just these AI agents. I think AI can play major roles in in different parts of Web3, some, some things that come to mind would be enhancing security um, and producing smart contracts. Uh, since AI can, can code, you know, maybe reviews, yeah, reviewing these smart contracts. Um, another thing that comes to mind is AI enhanced governance, um, which, which, yeah, like, like Mo mentioned, these tools are still being developed and made, but there's, there's so many places where, where they could be um, leveraged uh, and, and can kind of automate or facilitate uh, processes. Um, Maybe automated transactions could be could be big, uh, or predictive analytics. Uh, the possibilities the possibilities are really endless. It, it comes down to to us, uh, to what we create, what we put our mind to. Uh, but in summary, the interplay between blockchain and AI is likely to be a key driver um, of innovation. Uh, the combination of blockchain's transparency, security, and the decentralized nature with AI's uh, analytical capabilities has the potential to reshape, uh, I think, a lot of industries and, and economic systems. Right, so thank you so much for your input. Yeah, and so uh, this being the final question, then I would like to thank you for your time and maybe ask you guys to say a few words to end this to the audience, maybe thank them. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zoltan, for giving us this platform, no uh, for being such a wonderful host. Um, I'm sorry, guys, if I was a bit too technical. I love what I'm doing. I love the tech aspect of it. I forget uh, that I'm not um, kind of like speaking to my team sometimes. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, and I just want to leave it on one note. Um, I'm from Somalia. I was um, a refugee to Canada. Um, and my family is right now still in Somalia, and the climate change is not a it's not a faraway problem. It's not like oh, it's getting a bit warmer. Somalia is one of the top ten most ch climately challenged countries in the world, and uh, we're having a drought that's the worst in thirty years. So my uncle has a farm there. So what I'm doing is directly trying to make their lives better and all everybody else who's affected by climate change. So yeah, um, thank you very much, guys, for listening. And uh, Maurizio, uh, any last words? Amazing. Kind of hard to top yours. Uh, but uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for having me. It's been a great discussion uh, with both of you. Um, yeah, it's been a real pleasure. And yeah, let's build a more uh, democratized and, and, and fair, fair system, you know, with blockchain and a, a green, uh, sustainable ecosystem so we can have a better future.
All right. So thank, thank you guys once again for your time. And to all our listeners and viewers, thank you for joining us today. And we will be back next week with even more fun stuff. See you later. And that's a wrap for this section of Hitler Talks. Thank you for being a part of our journey today. Don't forget to tune in next week for more insights and discussions. Stay connected with us on Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and more. Until then, keep exploring and keep growing. We'll see you next time.